Hello everyone, Tykenzo here, and I kind of want to go through a different form of rigging. Um, some of you who may have looked at my channel before, you might see that I have a playlist for creating a simple rigged character, and I use the Patrick Everton Bags, aka Patty Bags character, to do that rig. Um, with that rig before, you could use inverse kinematics, and so the one I want to kind of look at is what's with the rigging tool. Now, on my screen, I have three different parts that I've drawn. One is an arm, one is a leg, and one is a tentacle. And they're all just doing some different actions. Now, with each one of these, I actually have um use the rigging tool to you could say create the deformation for them another name for it is a deformation so what it does is actually deform your drawings to do what you want them to do so unlike with the patty bags character where we built out different parts in this case you could actually use just one single drawing and set yourself some bones or curves and you could pretty much get your animation going so what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear what I've done here with the action and the deformation and show you how I go about rigging the one for the before I do that though the one I did for the tentacle is a curve deformation it uses um, curves to deform this appendage here and it's best used with um, soft body appendages like you could think of an elephant trunk or a carpet or a rope or a chain something along those nature for the others the arm I did a top-down kind of rig for that one so I started from the elbow or sorry not the elbow the um, shoulder go down to the elbow and then down to the wrist and I have a complete body I was gonna show you what each of these look like so if I show you the tentacle one it uses a curve deformation which as you can see here I can actually play around this and it bends curvy for the arm I've started here and go along the arm the leg however I did a little differently Normally when I'm doing deformation, I do it top down, but I find that, you know, bottom up or ground to top is probably best, especially when you want to have good foot placement. So you could actually just have your foot in place and you could bend it. And if you have an, a body attached to this, you could always just pull the body down by the hip if the hip is in charge of the upper body. All right, so let me just clear this out. Now we start again. So clear all this nice action here, and I'm going to also remove the deformation to show you how we can get about doing it. And I'll isolate each layer as I do them. So I'll go to my network, and I have some other stuff from before, but I'll just get rid of these. And so now all we have here are the base drawings: one for the arm, one for the foot, and one for the tentacle. All right, so let's focus on the arm first. This is the one that most people will be familiar with. Now, if you remember in my other tutorials with rigging, um, what you can do is you have to create three different parts based on what you expect your movements to be. If you have a more complex appendage, you end up with more parts. And don't even start mentioning even the patching because you have to know where to patch. But in this case, I really didn't do a patch. I just had a solid color arm, like a claw, you could say. And so the rigging tool is really up here. If you do not see this tool here, you could right click in this big gray area and you should see an option that says deformation. All right, so I'm going to click on that. If you have a lower version of Harmony, I'm using Harmony 12 right now, yours would look like a red hammer with a um, spanner. 
I think that's a spanner. I'm not really a tools guy. So you click on this and you go on your current drawing layer. So it highlights purple right now. And so then you just start clicking where you expect your joints to be. So I'll start here. Here could be my shoulder if I had a character. And I could do one for the elbow and another one for the wrist. And one more for just some manipulation for the top. Now once you've done that, you can pretty much just get your transformation tool. You could start from here and we just start working from there. So perhaps we could have this arm bent down like so. And you'll notice I kind of have to use a forward kinematic approach where I have to control the parent and then go down to the children to put exactly where I want. I suppose what one difference with this is that you can actually extend your bone by clicking on that nice little square that you see here. And you'll also notice that you also have a little diamond here where there's a radius. This actually is the radius of the joint and the bigger that radius is, the more curved your um, bends become. So right now, if I come here and let's say I'm not going to be using the transform tool to do this. I was going back to the rigging just so I can edit the bone, how the bone works. And I could just come here when it's ready. That's in bone editing mode. So I could increase this up to this and go back to transform. It goes back to my first keyframe. And you'll notice there's this nice curve going on because the radius of the joint is much bigger. So we bend this in. It's a nice feel. Sometimes that's used as a cheat to um, not have to deal with doing a proper patch. But sometimes it's good to keep with good practices so that, you know, follow good industry practices. All right, so let's bring this down or rather just remove this keyframe. Now the parts that you're seeing are, one is the offset where you have a plus. That's the first part that you click. Offset allows you to move everything all at once, you could say it's kind of like treating it as if you had a peg controlling the entire arm. Um, this would be the bone. This is your next point. This would be another bone. And if you actually go inside the network into your deformation, you actually see it. So we have bone, 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 right? So this bone is controlling everything, followed by this bone, which, as you can see, is this. And then this bone for the wrist and the fingers. All right, so if you're animating it, all you have to do is move your stuff where you want it to be, and it will set your keyframes. All right, so we have a keyframe there as our first pose. And I could probably say... Let's do some kind of quick action here. We have the arm probably doing like a follow through. And then have it like so. And then give you some space, add a keyframe, and let it just go by really quickly. Rotate this up like so. So if I zoom out, I get an action somewhat like this. And if I want it faster, of course, reduce the amount of time between the actions. Right? We could probably have a settle. So you can't use inverse kinematics with this, unlike with the Patty Bags character. And if you want to, you can always mess around with the timing by coming to your set ease for multiple parameters here. And so maybe we want some fast action going on here. Right? 
So I could come here and instead of having a straight line, I could start out fast and then slow to kind of show like a build up. Apply that. Go along with this. Want some really fast action going on. I'm hoping this goes well. Okay. And then we can probably settle with this one. So end slowly. Apply. So now we get something like this. Alright. That's our first deformation. The next one I could try with the foot. Right? Just the arm. You notice it's kind of grouped here now. Deformation arm. Deformation attached to the arm. Now for the foot, what I had done before, unlike this one, where I did a top down from the shoulder to the fingertips, what I'll be doing for this one though is to start from the toes and go up the leg. So we come back to our rigging tool. Us click about here. And about if about here, in case you want to do like one of those toe bends. I just come up to here, then click to where I that's for my you know my ankle, then click to where my knee should be and then click here. Now clicking adds bones. So when we get to the tentacle, I'm going to be doing a different approach. So we got the transform tool. And so maybe we'll have the first one doing an action. Then probably for this foot deformation, we'll add a keyframe. And we will have that was our first pose. And what we can do is probably, you know, bend these down. And of course, I can mess with my timing from now. I wanted to start out fast and then slow down to show some level of tension. So, but I suppose I did that one wrong. This is that other way. So, fast, slow. Add that tension there. Probably have it shoot up to be on its tiptoe. So, could bend this up like so, straighten this up, and you'll notice that this part doesn't look very wonderful. So sometimes you know you can either shrink your radius, which you wouldn't always recommend doing that, because it does mess up your stuff. So here to bring this down like so and so we can probably do that fast action thing going on maybe that one fast and apply So now we have two actions. So now I can just take my offset from here because I haven't set a keyframe for it and it won't move. But if I did, I could do something like this and then say we come here, you know, we could have something like this. It was here. Let's move this on top of this. Bring this back down again. All right. So if it's not perfect, you can always undo what we don't like. All right. So. And now I'm going to do the tentacle. And afterwards, I just load up something just to show 
what you can end up doing. So now I'll isolate the tentacle. This is my tentacle. Usually you want to do your stuff in straight lines. So you don't try to draw something already deformed like if you're drawing a um like a rope or a string. Don't draw the string in a curve like so. It's usually best to draw it straight and then you can deform it to the curve. So now with the tentacle, that's what before. Um, same rigging tool, only this time, instead of just clicking and clicking, if we just did clicks, we could still easily get that bone going on. But this is too stiff. Right? So I want something that kind of curves. So what we'll do instead now is the same rigging tool, we're going to go on the tentacle. We're going to click and drag or point. So click and drag. Don't let go, just drag. And then over here, we can have click and drag. I'm not dragging forward because if I drag forward, it's going to have this curve. So I'm dragging back. And so that's done. Once you have your transform tool, you can have these little tangents you can work with. And you can work like a spline action of sorts or spline pose. Let's say we start it down here. So you move this up how you want. You know, let's add a little tension in here. Um, we don't need too close on account of it's going to be deformed too much. But if necessary, what would have been probably better is if we added um, three points. So let's undo that. And like I had before, what I will do is I will have more than just one point. So click and drag about there on about midpoint, drag back, and also up here, drag back. And so now I have three points. And this is how you do deformation. So just like before, you know, we can probably set ourselves a keyframe, and then we just pull this back to. Let's say we had this level of tension going on. Keep using that word tension. Right? And so this is how you do deformation. Now, I usually recommend going with two. I would recommend going with two points if you know you don't really fully understand it. If you don't like what you have, you know, you just keep tweaking until you find something satisfactory. And of course, you notice here has some problems, so patching would be good for there. Well, it just takes practice, applying the principles using your slow in, slow outs, working on your timing, and that's how you would get about doing a, you know, a deformation. So, thank you for watching. Um, in the next video, what I'm going to upload is going to be what a full character, a full basic character would look like doing a deformation. So, thank you for watching, and take care.